and Jack, and this is, uh, look who's cooking. I should have hesitated when I said look who's cooking because things are a little different today. Um, we don't have a special guest. I'm going to be my own special guest, which is a little different than usual. So I almost said uh, Downtown Kitchen because that was my show when I, when I used to do it alone and with guests once in a while, but I was on alone a lot. But today what I want to uh, talk to you about, it's, it's that time of year when it's still nippy and we still want to have nice comfort foods. And I know there are many, many more vegetarians than ever before or people who just don't like meat. Or I was talking to one of our people who told me she was allergic to beef. Uh, so there's all sorts of things going on. So what we're going to do today, we're going to sort of have, uh, it's close to St. Patrick's Day, so I sort of, uh, wanted to deal with some of the foods that might have been eaten when the Irish came to this country and around in the 1830s, you know, they, they came to build the canals in this area. And Norristown up to Reading and down to Philadelphia had a lot of canal systems, so there were a lot of Irish in the area for that. Uh, what I'm going to do first is show you, so we can start it and have it done by the end of the show, steamed vegetables. Now, most people go, ooh, steamed vegetables, how appealing is that? Well, <coughs> it's quite appealing if you make it right. So I'm going to have my, my little pot here. And these are the vegetables that I um, have chosen to put in here. First of all, we have this nice cabbage. I love cabbage. I know a lot of people sort of don't, and it gives a lot of people trouble, but... Cabbage is just a wonderful food. It picks up flavors, and uh, it's just great. So I'm taking off the outer leaves because you can't really wash a cabbage too well. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to try to make the foods today uniform. Not completely uniform, but somewhat, um, so they will cook at the same rate instead of some being done more than others. I'm glad I asked for this uh, serrated knife. I forgot mine, and uh, I needed one for later on, but I see I need it for this cabbage. So I have the cabbage, and I'm going to just take out the core as much as I can. It's not a biggie. It will fall off the core when uh, it's finished cooking. That's good. Here we have it. So what I want to do is get rid of this garbage. And I'm going to cut the cabbage in mm, sort of not coleslaw, but coarsely chopped or coarsely cut across. Let me get. And that's what I sort of put on the the bottom of the uh, pan here, and I just open it up. Again, the amounts are up to you, how many people you want to feed, what you want to do, um, how hungry you are, how much they like vegetables in your family. Uh, it's surprising. I find more and more young children going towards vegetables more than the middle class kids, or me meaning middle class, but middle age kids I can I find here, I, that's surprising, but I wanted to say that I find here uh, the crew at the high school are pretty open about what they try. I don't know if they like it, but they all seem to try everything every week. I want to put in some carrots, and you can use the regular kind, but I like these uh, little baby carrots. They're really, um, they're easy, they're nice, they cook up easy, and uh, you'll find kids even like those. So I'm going to put some of those in, and then I have the, uh, I love these little potatoes, little red potatoes. Again, you don't have to put anything particular in it, but it's whatever you like and people will eat. And, but I do, I love this vegetables like this, because what we're going to do, we're going to steam them, but we're going to steam them in, um, Apple juice, and uh, that makes something. You can do it in anything. I mean, if, if you're really allergic to stuff, you can do it in water, but it's tastier if you do apple juice or ale or something like that even. So I have those potatoes in there. Uh, you have to have an onion. 
And again, I'm just trying to, I'm not making everything the same size, but I'm making it somewhat the same size so it, it cooks at the same rate of speed. The, um, I was saying before about the Irish, there were a lot of, there are still a lot of Irish in this area. And um, the, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was about along the Schuylkill River, was one of the first Irish Catholic churches, and it was in the outdoors, and it was, um, it had an old, I'm sorry, it, I'm, I'm busy, sometimes it's hard to talk and do something. It is, um, it was outdoors, it was made of stone along the river, of the river stone that they made the altar, and that's what they used for their first church. It, one of the interesting things I found out, you know how in Ireland they call everything, Green, it's a green color. It's a, green. a lot of people believe it's true because of there's that many golf courses in Ireland. And it, I think it's in Dublin. has like, it's either 9 or 19. I know that's a number, but I'm not sure which number that is. So they're, uh, they're into golf. I just, for some reason, I just never see golf beyond the United States, but it's, it's all over. Let's see, anything else I can put in? I have some sweet potatoes. Or this is a yam. I'm sorry. Not to be mixed up. There is a difference. They're a little tougher. If you remember earlier on, uh, we had a guest, Cynthia McGorry from the in uh, Inquirer. Well, she had a tough time cutting her yams because she had big yams. And so here we have part of a yam. Whoops, it's not my skin, the onion skin. What else? Oh, I want to throw in some straw, not strawberries. Do these look like strawberries? String beans. I have to take a course in identifying fruits and vegetables, it seems. You ever have that happen to you? Your mouth doesn't seem to work with your brain too many times. Now, my last thing I'm going to put in is an apple. I think apples just make a wonderful uh, steam. I can't say vegetable, but it, it's a wonderful uh, steamed fruit, and it goes well with all this, and it sweetens up, whoops, it sweetens up the, um, all the other stuff. You can put in any kind of apple, there's nothing, um, this is a Fuji. I love the apples now, they have these little tags on them and I identify what they are, it's a lot easier than guessing. Or you look at the tag at the supermarket, you get home and you forgot what you looked at. So let me just finish up, put the apple in. Cut that down. There we are. See, we have all this wonderful, wonderful... Um, Let me get this out of my, your, my way, but I wanted to tell you, you think, why am I using a cookbook? Uh, well, one number one is <laughs> it's pretty easy because I use so many recipes, I often forget what, uh, what goes into everything, every ingredient. But this particular one is my cookbook. It's called Three Cups of Yesterday, and it is available. And um, you watch the graphic at the end, and it'll tell you where to write or to call in order to order your, or reserve your copy. It's a lot of fun. In this particular... Uh, this is my third cookbook. That's not why it's called Three Cups. Uh, the first one was Downtown Kitchen, then it was Two Cups, and this is Three Cups because it's based on the uh, column that I have in the Phoenixville paper called Downtown Kitchen. It tells the story of my growing up or, or related things in the, the community, and then I connect a recipe with it. And people, many people like the stories, many people like the recipes, some like them both, but it, it's very, very uh, well received. And I think maybe if you're interested, just get contact me. But I use my own recipe books a lot. So, okay, here we have the apples and the potatoes and the string beans. I think that looks pretty good like that, except it'd be a little hard to eat if, unless you had really good teeth. So, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some apple juice It's hard to determine. I just sort of see where, when it's about halfway up, because this is going to be like a steaming effect. 
And I'm going to um, crank up the burner here. I want to mention something I think that's interesting, uh, whether you should cover or not cover vegetables. I read this somewhere. This isn't my own, so you have to decide what you If the vegetable root grows below the ground, you cover your pot. If it's above the ground, like they just string beans, then you don't cover the pot. But since it's half and half, half root vegetables and half above ground vegetables, I'm going to cover it for a while till it starts up. And then I'll uncover it as it continues to cook. I guess I couldn't have gotten much more in there. So here we have that. And that's going to, let me get rid of some of this stuff here. The next thing I want to uh, show you is something that goes very well with that, or it just, it's just goes well with whatever, a bread, that's what it is. And it is considered uh, a molasses or an Irish molasses bread. It's very hearty, it's very porous, it's not um, a light bread, it's, it's heavy, it's a heavy bread. And I think. So what we need for that is I have to open my cookbook again because I'm not sure, I think I know it. I made it last night one, I had to make it last night, of course, or you wanna had one today. In here, we put, in a nice big bowl, because you're really gonna have to mix this. I do this by hand and not by um, mixer. We put in, there we go, three and a half cups of self-rising flour, and that's important. Uh, I often don't abide by this, old, but it is important because it makes it rise and it has a lot of leavening in it already. Then with that, we're going to put, is this it? Yeah. One and a third cup of wheat flour. Now the wheat flour is what's gonna make it uh, really nice and tasty and heavy. And so I mix that together. so thrilled we just have, we have stuff here now, you know, you just reach down and get it. So I'm going to put that all together. This is really easy. You can do this in, you know what, do you smell the apple trees? <laughs> Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, we have that in there. And now I'm going to put uh, a cup and a half of sugar. No, a cup and a third of sugar in here. This is pretty sweet. You can cut back a little if you want on the sugar, but not much because then it's not going to work out. So let me just take a look at the... These metal pots are beautiful and wonderful and all. But you have to be very careful. They're very hot when they start to this. Okay. So there we have that all together. And then we need a teaspoon of baking powder. You know, check the baking powder in your cupboards. It's um, if it's more than a year old or it has an expiration date, go by that. It's really important as for baking powder. I mean, there's other things that you can see, salt, you know, I don't know if there's even a limit on salt, but baking powder, you need to have all the, p the potents of, of uh, rising in it that you can get. In fact, that was a funny thing. Uh, the American Cooking Club, which I'm a member of, did a, um, a it's not a survey, but did a testing on uh, baking powder, and I was chosen to be one of the people to test it. And you think it's, it's really stupid. Uh, uh, stupid, yeah, that's the word. How are you going to test baking powder? But there is a difference, and uh, you can sort of tell that as you're using it. So I, it was fun. Of course, they didn't let me test the oven and give me the oven like they do, or they didn't give me the, uh, let me test the fryer and give me the fryer. They gave me baking powder. 
So we have all that in there. What I'm doing with uh, the little whisk is I'm aerating it a little, just with some air so it um, isn't all laying down, especially since I had pre-measured and put everything in a container to get here. Okay. Now we have that. I had to be careful. I never realized until I watch the Look Who's Cooking on television how loud that can be. <laughs> now what I need is a half a cup of molasses. I love molasses. It's such a wonderful warm flavor that, but sometime I, when I'm making something with it, you'll find me testing it out. So we need a half a cup of that. It's very slow moving too. Did I say a cup and a half? A half a cup. <laughs> do, 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 do. No, I can't. Uh, sometime if you have a big bottle and a small cup, you can just leave it there as it runs out. But it will have to. And then this calls for um, two cups of buttermilk or sour milk. Buttermilk, you can buy buttermilk in the supermarket. And if you what you can do with sour milk is use regular milk and you just put some vinegar in it or put some lemon juice in it. But vinegar is really the best. And it curdles up and it makes the, the culture that they're looking for for this uh, particular recipe. So here we have two cups. And what I usually do when we get I had to let this run out again. That's sort of stupid, but they should make cup or half cup containers that you could just pour into so something. But they don't. You have to pour it out of the. And what I do after I measure the two cups, I take a little of the milk pour it in the molasses cup <coughs> and it just sort of gets some of the off the inside so you use it all pretty color vegetables again. Just starting to steam up. It's funny, I just got a whiff of the onion and the apple at the same time. That's sort of unusual. So here we have uh, mix that in for now. And this takes a little while but to feed the um, flour and the sugar batter into the milk. Because sometimes you think, oh, I don't have enough, and then you want to use more, and all of a sudden, it's too wet. Now, this can't be too wet. This is a very wet batter. And here we... When I was growing up, we uh, lived next to a I always thought they were an Irish Catholic family until I found out that the father was Baptist. But, and they did all the things that I thought uh, an Irish family would do, was sing around the piano, and uh, their only son became a priest. It was something out of a movie. And um, they were always great fun. They, they made a lot of nice foods and good foods. Mrs. Howard, that was their name, was Howard. She used to like to make pies all the time, and we could never figure out. She never made cake. And then I found out from her one daughter, the reason she didn't make a cake is she thought you had ice in a cake and you didn't have to ice in a pie. So when the pie came out of the oven, it was all finished. 
So you know what? She's right. My mom was a cake maker, so that's... It'll start coming together. So this, see this spoon? And it's a short handle. When I really have to mix something and get down in it, I like the, uh, the short-handled spoons. I know people have these long ones, and I, I really don't know what it's for. I guess it's so they don't get burnt, but I feel it's just easier. This is a little hard. It's a little floury yet, so I'm going to add a little more milk, the buttermilk. It's funny, I mentioned my cookbook and in it, all my stories about growing up, and it got to be for a long time. I felt I wasn't having a conversation with people. <laughs> I thought I was talking in stories when I would talk to them. And uh, so I had to get back to real life and not just talk stories. Because they were all about, really about Phoenixville during the 40s, 50s. Uh, I've been in Norris Town longer than I've been in Phoenixville in my life, but it's still my hometown, and uh, I had the opportunity to do that. You can see this. It's all coming together. It's a nice dough. Ah, oh, heavy dough. And if I want to, I think I'll leave it that heavy. Now I have a pan. And I have to tell you, see what I mean? I have a story about everything. I'm very proud to have these pans. These pans belong to my Bubba, which, Bubba Klimcha, which was my father's mother. Now, her name wasn't Banjack, but she remarried. But um, I, that's the only thing I have of hers. And so I sort of am very careful. And not that I don't use them and let other people use them, but I make sure they don't disappear into the night because uh, it won't be anywhere. As I said, this it's not, it is the only thing I have of hers, these two pans. And I only have them because I think my mother uh, resurrected them for me from somewhere. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is take one of these pans. It can't not have to be shaped like this. I happen to like the shape of this. Uh, it could be an 8-inch uh, cake pan or something, uh, something, thing, not a little cake pan or anything like that. And what I do is I, you know, the lightly coat the, and because this comes up and over the lip, I make sure I get the lip of the pan. I don't know. Hang on, we don't have anything to. I know. A watched pot never cooks. And do you know? That's true. I think. Um, you know what I forgot to put in there? More than the salt, I like pepper. I like cracked pepper, to be exact. But I'm going to add a little salt. You can do that as you eat it, how much you want. little pepper. And this is going to go back on. All right, we have the cake. You have to understand one thing, why I'm a little... All the shows recently, I've had a guest and I haven't cooked. So they bring their items and they know what they're doing. And that's the same thing with me. What happened was when I used to cook out for Downtown Kitchen, I used to cook out of my kitchen. So if I didn't have something, I just turned around and got it. I opened the refrigerator. So this is almost like a new experience to me again today to remember to bring everything. It's a heavy bread dough, I'll tell you. The, uh, the, what is it? The buttermilk helps it, but it makes it heavy too. That's what gives it the holes. Molasses makes it heavy. You're going to see with the finished one, it's seemingly the 
nature of the cake bread, excuse me, falls in in the middle when it's baked after it cools. You know, it's lonely in the kitchen. I don't have anyone to talk to today. Huh. Forgot how nice it is. To have, I didn't forget how nice. I know how nice it is to have company in the kitchen. I have to make sure we have company next week. Okay. Let me just get rid of this. You know, out to the sides and try to smooth it down just a little. Don't poke it. Oh, I smell the apple juice now. Anybody else smell apple juice? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's starting to really bubble up. I think I'm going to leave it. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll leave it uh, cook away like that. Let me... Um, I want to get some of that pepper and salt areas underneath. Okay, so now, if you really want to have meat with this, no one's not saying you can't have some ham or uh, something special, some turkey, whatever, but you can have it either way. This is the reason you don't have to eat meat. I know there's more people not eating meat. I know I, one of the things I do not to eat. I love pork, so I hate pork. But uh, I don't eat um, much beef at home. The only time I eat beef is when I go out to dinner and I make my favorite thing, of course, which is reservations. So um, here we have the cake in the pot, the pan. And this, these are nice pans. Boy, I wish we, I never saw any like that since. She used to bake Easter bread in these. And they would come, they would really rise up and make this big mushroom thing. It was really nice. I can't say I remember too much because she did die when I was five. I think I remember more my one aunt making them with these pans than my uh, bubba. So let me see. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this back. Can we? Uh, can't follow. I'll be right back. Or maybe you can. You're going to put it in for the first 20 minutes at 350, and then you lower the uh, temperature to 300, and um, at for about 40 minutes or test it. It's hard to test. It doesn't come out like, like I said, regular bread, which sounds hollow when you tap it. I use a cake test tester on it, and this is what we come up with. There we go. Fine little cake. See how it, it went down in the middle? Well, that's the characteristic of it when it's once it's it's um, cooling. As it cools, it goes down in the middle. So what we can do is um, let me cut. I like it this way. This sh you know, it's a nice shape and all, but I think it's going to cut better this way. So I'm going to turn it around the other way. Here we have the bread, and it's cut. And a nice thing to serve, of course, you have to have with that, whether you eat it or not, is, um, I didn't get this off, is some butter, 
serve a little spreader. And if you really want to eat something good on this, if you really like sweet stuff, is to serve um, apple butter on that or cottage cheese or anything, you, if not, or eat it plain or with butter or no butter. Um, oh, let's get back to the vegetables. They're smelling good. I have to test one. I thought I had a, f oh, here we go. Try to test this carrot. Woo! It's hot. The carrot's hot. Well, you know, the, the others are starting to get nice and soft. So what I want to do is close the cookbook. I don't need it anymore, and straighten up a little bit. And I'm going to. Put the bread next to the vegetables. We have that. We have a little. Oh, there it is. Here's a little bread spreader. We have that. And that'll make a wonderful meal for uh, any night, especially St. Patrick's Day. You want to celebrate, celebrate in the real way. Actually, in the eight, 1830s, when most of Many of the Irish came. They had no meat. They didn't use meat at all. They just wasn't around. And what the uh, pota potato famine, when a lot of them came, 1850 something, I'm not quite sure, uh, the potato famine came around. And the potato famine was actually a, uh, what they call a fungus was hitting the potatoes. It wasn't, it was a definite reason. It wasn't they didn't know or the crops were just running. It was an actual fungus. And uh, so when they came to America, the people that had any land were able to, I don't know if they brought potato spuds, eyes, or whatever with them, or, or if they got them here. But they were able to once again grow potatoes and, and most of the fruits and vegetables that were around, not bananas here in this area, but, you know, apples. That's why I have apples in here and uh, all sorts of things. They were available, so they were ate. That was their big meal for the day. And... Um, I think that's going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you for sharing some time with me. And uh, this is Betty Banjack, and this is Betty Banjack saying, look who's cooking. Bye now.